So I'm a pediatric emergency medicine physician and I've been working in Boston for the last 10 years. And I'm going to try to give you a couple pointers uh, when we talk about um, um, managing the pediatric airway. Um, so we can run this. So what's going through your mind where you have a, a patient like this? Like, like, what are you thinking? How are you going to address and approach this airway? All right. So uh, why is this a concerning? Why is this an issue? It doesn't happen that commonly enough. It's kind of rare. Uh, most, in most places, especially community uh, emergency departments, pediatric airway uh, tools are not readily incorporated in the airway cards. And basically, there's not enough training also uh, for, for most physicians, even pediatric emergency physicians in some places, to do airway management. So a couple of things. Look at the FRC. Remember the FRC. This is the volume that when you pre oxygenate someone, is going to give you a reserve time. The volume, the FRC in kids is, is very small. So if you look here, um, you have a normal adult, you have around seven to eight minutes of apnea time before they start desaturating, all right? And that's because they have a good FRC, a, a bigger FRC, so when you're pre-oxygenated, you'll give you that, that time. Instead, a healthy kid will only have three or, or so minutes of apnea time before they they're start to desaturate, right? So make sure you, they're fully pre-oxygenated, make sure you can do like apneic oxygenation, all those things. Uh, the anatomy is different here uh, on the right side of your screen. You can see like an infant airway. You see it, it's very floppy. It's hard to di differentiate the vocal cords from the cartilages as opposed to the other one, which is like a, a teenager or an adult. When you see like a very firm epiglottis, you can readily tell the vocal cords and the, and the cartilages from the other part. We all learned this. We all learned that the pediatric airway was funnel shape, and that's what we traditionally used to, uh, uncuffed tubes in pediatrics because they will sit here as opposed to adults. Well, this is not longer true. There's a lot of studies done recently um, on CT models, and we know now the airway actually is it's, it's oval form with their AP <coughs> diameter slightly wider than their, uh, than their transverse diameter. And you can see a presentation here. And that's why we routinely now try to use cuff tubes in kids. We're using cuff tubes at pre-hospital level. We can use cuff tubes up to two and a half or three size tubes. So I would say that most, if not every single kid that I intubate, I'm using a cuff tube. All right, so I strongly encourage you to do this. The new technologies, so all these uh, balloons now, they're, like, they're low pressure, and they're, you're not going to have those complications, your theoretic complications of ischemia of the airway. But probably the most important thing is your basics, and the basics is back valve ventilation. By the way, this, uh, I want to give a, a call to, to a man, Carla, Kyra, who's the, the chair of anesthesia at Tufts in Boston. And this website, um, it's, it's free access, open access. And they have like amazing videos and you can, uh, you can just go in and, and, and look at it. Um, so remember uh, 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 ventilation, mask ventilation. Always try to do it with two people. It's so much easier. Sometimes it's really hard to get a good seal in kids. And sometimes you need a higher pressure. So try to use two hands. If you're gonna use one hand because you're by yourself, try to make sure that you put your fingers on the bony prominence, prominence on the jaw and try to avoid, especially in younger kids, putting your fingers under the tongue because you're gonna occlude their airway, okay? Uh, and the other important thing is a little bit of jaw thrust. Just a little bit of jaw thrust, um, we can play this video too, uh, will immediately open your airway. So it's very important to do that positioning. Gentle jaw thrust, so, gentle chin lift no thrust. will absolutely open your airway. So this is the patient before they do the jaw thrust. And look just by doing the simple maneuver how the airway comes into place. All right, so positioning. Positioning is key in pediatrics, okay? What do kids do? They have a big tongue. And what do big tongues do? They obstruct. So every time I'm bagging a patient, a kid, I'm using an oral airway, and I'm considering using a nasal trumpet as well. Right, you can back, you can avoid intubating kids when they're seizing if you're able to put an, an oral airway and bag these kids away. If there's a couple of slides that I want you to take home with you is in the following slides. All right, remember the kids have a big head and what do they do? Big heads do, they obstruct. Right, so there are a couple of lines I want to remember. I want to remember this nose chin axis and then I want to remember, I'll show you the next slide, this external auditory meatus to sternum line. Right, so you want to have a wide open interior neck space. And you need to use whatever you have available, uh, like headrests, shoulder rolls, to align these two lines. Nose chain axis line and external auditory meatus through external notch axis. So when I'm going to intubate a kid, before standing on the head of the bed, I stand on the side of the bed 
and look at the kid on the side and make sure these things are aligned, all right? For example, this kid is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit tilted, so it's a little bit flexed. This kid is way too hyperextended, all right? So when you're gonna look at that airway, your, your axes are not gonna be aligned appropriately. So use whatever you have uh, before you intubate this kid so you approach the airway, all right? So probably mo the most time that you do before intubating is preparing, getting your position, getting everything else that you need, okay? So take a, a second before you do this and move forward. There's a lot of, 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 of discussions uh, about what uh, is the best uh, tool to use to bag these kids. Most places have the self-inflating bags. Um, I think overall we tend to use more the, the flow and fake inflating bags. You have a much, a much better way to sense that airway. You can easier do positive pressure, continuous positive pressure ventilation with, a, with an anesthesia bag. If you have though an Ambu bag, make sure they're right size and make sure you have a peep valve. Okay, oftentimes, especially in kids with asthma, especially kids that are they're, like, they clamp easily, you want to make sure you have a peep valve to be able to do some positive pressure with these things. With respect to blades, um, I think bottom line, we recommend that you use what you're comfortable with. I think routinely, we tend to use straight blades. And remember the slides that I show you. It's, you know, it's harder to expect to have a floppy epiglottis and just go into the molecular and try to pull it up in younger kids with a, with a curved blade. So what you want to do is a, a, a careful, direct approach with a straight blade, and you just gently lift up the So I think routinely, in most of my intubations, I use, I use straight blades. They just make your life so much easier. Another thing that actually happens in my shop all the time and drives me crazy is uh, the stylets. Make sure you have a 10 French stylet. A small stylet is great for a tube for like a two or two and a five or a three tube. But if you're going to use a three and a half, a three and a half, a four, four and a half tube, the big French stylet is not going to fit. And trying to intubate a kid with a, with a three or four size tube with a small stylet is painful. It's too floppy. It's going to bend. It's going to be, you know, when you're in the right spot and it's just not going in. So make sure you have all the size uh, stylets. RSI is an entire talk on itself, but always remember RSI. Is going to maximize your chances to intubate that airway, minimizing your side effects of intubation. All right. So take-home messages. You know, remember the physiologic and anatomic difference in kids and adults. Uh, prepare, prepare, prepare. Things that we're doing here. Make sure you do simulations. Make sure you do all this. Uh, make sure you have your equipment. Make sure you train your stuff. Remember positioning, positioning, positioning kids. Um, always have your rescue plans. Um, always use RSI. And just remember the basic premises of airway management, which is back valve ventilation. And I open for questions.